Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Big stories now. Chinese ultimatum to the United States. Back off Pakistan. Any attack on Pakistan will be construed as an attack on China. That is clear. Uh, That couldn't be any clearer. Back off. Gilani also. Anybody interfering with our strategic assets, meaning nuclear forces, will face full force retaliation. That's got to mean firing off some of these nukes if it means anything. So that is uh, the situation. The first time in my lifetime that I know of, a great power, China, has issued, in effect, an ultimatum to the United States. This was done privately during the U.S.-Chinese strategic dialogue last week. And all of this comes out of the Bin Laden circus stunt. Now, concerning Obama, we want to talk in the next segment about Obama and his uh, crazy speech on the Middle East. You notice his big thing is he wants the IMF and the World Bank to rule Tunisia and Egypt. Boy, if there's anything you don't want to have happen to your revolution is to the IMF to come in and take it over. And Obama's pretending that that's doing them a favor. But now, specifically on Libya, On May 20th, and that would be today, we reach the 60-day limit on the War Powers Act. Now, Obama has not submitted anything to the Congress that I know of. That means he's got 30 days to get out of Libya, to stop bombing Libya. And if he doesn't, he has violated the War Powers Act. That is impeachable. That could be an item in an impeachment bill. So that's important to bear in mind concerning the legal status of of one Barry Sotoro, a.k.a. Barack Hussein Obama, a.k.a. a.k.a. The other one is Jerome Corsi, a right-winger. I guess we can say he's a reactionary, although not maybe one of the most extreme, but that's a matter of opinion. Uh, Corsi's preparing a biography of Obama, and uh, Esquire magazine on their website put out a hoax in the last 48 hours saying that the the biography was going to be withdrawn. That Joseph Farah of World Net Daily was so freaked out about the Obama birth certificate that he was going to destroy 200,000 copies were going to be shredded. And it turns out that's a complete hoax. So uh, this is um, a direct attack on the First Amendment and uh, Esquire magazine doing its best to suppress uh, interesting things undoubtedly that Corsi will have in that book. So let's go immediately to Philadelphia and get an update on the uh, Obama birth certificate and presidential qualification in general under especially the heading Indonesia. And let's get that update from Phil Berg, uh, the guy who started it all in August of 2008. Welcome, Phil. Uh, Thank you, Webster. Um, Right now we're so perplexed we're not sure which way to move first because the audacity of the White House to come out with that phony birth certificate about two weeks ago. Um, and now, I don't know if you've seen the latest, they're trying to use that to make fun of it by putting it, if you make a contribution, on the back of a mug um, or even on the back of a shirt. Um, I have to verify that, but it looks like that's what they're doing. <clears throat> and the thing is, <clears throat> um, there's so many holes in that document, it's, it's worse than uh, Swiss cheese. And um, we have to figure out, right now we're all deciding which way to move on that document. But somehow we have to get to the American public just to, to expose this um, this fraud on this con- on, on our country. Um, all the facts are on our website, which is ObamaCrimes.com. Um, the latest with this birth certificate, uh, it's just uh, there's so many factors there. The first one is that it was prepared in a, a PDF format. Um, PDF did not exist in 1961. Uh, the next thing is there are various layers on the document that didn't exist in 1961. Um, I, I can't. I think they just figure that here's the birth certificate and everyone will go away. Unfortunately, the national media has not attacked it, but uh, we are. We're looking at several uh, ways to do it. Um, I'm on the brink of hopefully raising some substantial money to be able to put out a reward for the information which will expose Obama. It's out there. I'm Great. sure he's being blackmailed. I'm not sure who internally or externally. Um, you know, I don't like to get into the issues, but you raised a very good issue, the Libya issue, today's being the 60th day. And uh, Obama doesn't care about the Constitution, so he doesn't care about Congress. He doesn't care about anything. He's just going to continue in his efforts. And, you know, it's time, uh, like you mentioned, impeachment. Unfortunately, um, 
I don't think there's enough people there that would impeach him, but, you know, many things he's done are up for impeachment. But I don't even think he could impeach him because he's not a legitimate person uh, in office. He's a usurper, and as I've stated many times, he's a phony, and this is a um, – he's an imposter, and this is the biggest hoax against the United States of America in our history. And we must stand firm on um, on this. Now – we will continue on our efforts. We're trying to decide what, but with the Libya thing, you raised that. Also, the speech uh, that he just made to um, at the State Department regarding uh, Israel uh, really is unconscionable. That he wants to go back before the 1967 uh, lines. Um, this is, uh, you know, not uh, Netanyahu is coming in to speak with him, and he tried to one up Netanyahu by giving the speech the day before. And I think that's uh, I, one of my friends uh, emailed me and said, "Well, that's like the kiss of death. He's not getting reelected." But we don't know what's going on with uh, the voters out there. I, I, I don't understand how voters um, are still leaning towards him when all the um, truth has come out. The fact that he is a, a phony. So we're, we're going to continue our efforts here, and uh, any input from you or your listeners would be greatly appreciated. We're um, we're getting ready to file that other lawsuit, which I've discussed several times under the False Claims Act, because we feel he's not only not natural born, he's not naturalized, but he's an illegal alien. And therefore, therefore his uh, term in office as a U.S. senator was fraud in Illinois, and the salary and benefits there, uh, plus the salary and benefits from him being a fraudulent president, should all be returned to the U.S. Treasury. And um, we're going to continue on those efforts. And... Um, we're going to just uh, do what we can on that. Recall the uh, Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals has a case which was argued several weeks ago uh, when I was out there with uh, Gary Krepp. So we're hoping that they will send it back down to the district court. So there's a lot going on right now. And also why Obama's doing these things with Libya and Israel and other things, I think that's going to help bring out the deep throat regarding Obama. And I mentioned that because that's trying to equate that to Watergate. With Watergate, they were looking for uh, what happened, and finally Deep Throat came through, and that spilled the beans, and that's what caused uh, Nixon to have to resign. The break-in wasn't much, but it was a cover-up, and we have a massive cover-up right now by Obama and his wife and other people in the administration regarding him, because he was not born in Hawaii. I don't buy it for one minute. And uh, the number, even the number on the uh, document they put out two weeks ago, um, does not even match the document, the certification of live birth, which they've been talking with the real birth certificates for the last two and a half years. You know, there's just, it's it's blatantly, blatantly a fraudulent document. And I don't understand, again, the uh, point on there, the father is listed as a race of African. There was no race in Africa in 1961. People either called them black or Negro or colored, not African. And there's not even a race African right now. Also, this long form that he put out doesn't have what most long forms have, and that's the baby's length and the, the baby's weight. So there's just so many factors on this that it's unconscionable. And we're going to do whatever we can to keep the message going out there because, number one, I think we're the laughing stock of the world. Number two, because many world leaders know that he's a fraud. Um, just by facts, and then I'm a little concerned because during the past week they came out and, and he said his uh, step-grandmother is being threatened <clears throat> over in Kenya. Well, the, his step-grandmother, which is Sarah Obama, uh, she testified, not testified, she gave us an affidavit, which is a recording on our website, which people have distorted, but we're going to put a better version, the correct version, up, because she states in Swahili that she was in the a hospital in Mombasa, Kenya, when he was born, August 4th, 1961. Okay. Bill, uh, when you look at that uh, thing with Corsi, that reminds me of Hatfield, the guy who wrote a biography of Bush the Younger, Fortunate Son, in 1999. And they, they did shred his book, and then uh, within about two years, he was dead. So we better all watch out. We will. ObamaCrimes.com. Thank you, Webster. Talk to you next week. See you next week. And we'll be back in a second.